let us begin. We're going to start cross ankles. Back up tall and straight, rolling shoulders towards your spine and allowing the thighs and the knees to sink. And from there, bringing your hands together in front of your chest. And your eyes can be open or closed. So just let those eyes soften and relax either way. And now with your breath, we're going to lift and lower the arms. So as you breathe in, stretching your arms up over your head. As you breathe out, sliding palms back down to where you started. All in your own time, lifting and lowering with the breath. And if you find that as you lift your arms, your hands need to part, go ahead, part them. And if you can't get your elbows straight, that's also fine. Then you keep them bent. Allow yourself to take in deep, full breaths. Feeling for the ribs in your back expanding and contracting with each breath. Feeling the side ribs lift up nice and high each time the arms go up. And now next time your arms lift, we're going to circle. So again, breathing in to reach up. As you breathe out, wide circle of arms out to the side and down. Circling hands back up to your chest as you breathe in. So it's like you're swimming through the air with your arms. Notice how your neck and your shoulders feel as those arms go up. Not necessarily having to change the tension there, just noticing it. And still feeling for the movement in your back ribs as you breathe. And now next time you reach your arms up and you circle them wide, we're going to keep them down. Take your arms back behind you, interlace your fingers behind your back, stretching the front of the shoulders open. And either keep your nose pointing forward or if you prefer, you can drop your chin to your throat. Now this morning, we're going to be doing a whole lot of twists as we breathe. Now releasing the hands and on an inhale, lift your arms back up over your head, stretch into your fingertips, lift those side ribs again, lengthen up through the top of your head. Notice how the knees lift as the arms are lifting, let the legs sink. And from here, we're going to take a twist around to the right, taking your right hand back behind you, left hand to the outside of that right thigh or knee. Turning the left palm away from your leg so that you're not pulling on the thigh or the knee and lifting it. As soon as the knee lifts, the inner groin tightens. So the palm turns away from your leg to help the knees sink. So the inner groins and inner thighs can release. Now keeping your chest up high, keep lengthening up through back of your neck and with your breath untwist yourself. We'll change the cross of the legs, opposite shin in front. Heart lifting high. On an inhale, arms float up. And on an exhale, twist around to the left. Left hand behind you, right palm turns away from your leg. 
sink those knees again, but keep growing up tall through the top of your head to lengthen your spine. Noticing your breath as it grows in and out and softening your chest each time you breathe out. But as the chest softens, it lifts. Keeping that lengthening spine and twist yourself. And you're going to lean onto your palms behind you with your fingers pointing back away from you. Bring your feet forwards onto the edges of the mat or even wider with your knees bent. Keeping your bum on the floor or roll the knees left to right. I'm not trying to get thighs or knees to the ground, guys. Keep your bum down so you're nice and stable and heavy in the pelvis. And when the pelvis is stable and heavy, the connective tissue around the hip joints feels secure enough to allow itself to soften as you do this. Stay with the breath. Whenever we're doing our yoga or any other activity in our lives, our mind likes to wander. I just keep drawing it back into noticing the breath and watching the breath roll in and out. And now next time those knees lift, we're going to hold them there. And from here, slide your legs out into a V-shape. Flex your ankles. Okay, so heels down, toes up. And for those of you that have just joined, we are doing a whole lot of twists this morning. So we're going to turn around to the right, right fingers back behind you, left fingers over the right thigh or hand in front of you on the ground. Sink your weight fully into your left bum, lift your chest, and shift your weight to your upper back and the back of your head as if you're leaning against a wall behind you. Keep pressing your heels away from your hips, but also down into the floor. And then on an inhale, or a twist forwards, and on an exhale, twist around to the other side. And then that weight shifts onto the right sit bone. You're still leaning towards your upper back and the back of your head. Exactly as if you were leaning against a wall. And then we circle forwards again on an in-breath and once more around to the right as you breathe out. Check in with your feet, flex those ankles, draw your toes towards your knees. With your breath untwisting, on an exhale, circle around to the other side. Keep firming your legs. Keep watching the breath. Spine stays up straight and tall as you untwist yourself and then slide those legs in to touch each other, big toes together and we bend the right knee up. So foot on the ground in front of your right bum, wrap your left hand or elbow around your shin or your knee and now you can take that nice deep twist, our Maritasana feet all the way around to the right, soften into shoulders. Keep the shoulders even with each other. Don't hunch one shoulder up or push one shoulder down lower than the other. 
and then check that your weight is evenly distributed over the sits bones. You're not leaning too much to your left or your right thumb. And when that weight is evenly distributed, then your back will release. So again, the body feels secure enough to let go of tension because you are aligned. Keeping your tall straight back, circle forwards, heart lifting up high as you stretch your leg up. And then we bend that right knee up. Flex the left ankle, don't flop your foot and twist it off to the left. Once you're in your twist to the other side, each in breath lifts with your chest, lifts with the upper back and the back of your neck. So a great way to lengthen the spine is to lengthen your neck up. Check in with that balance of weight in the pelvis. Keep softening into the chest. Keep softening into your armpits to help release your shoulders. And then untwisting yourself, left leg stretches forward, and we open the legs out into a V again. And now, guys, we're going to be moving and twisting with the breath. And as you do that, I want you to keep squeezing your tummy muscles tight. So each time you breathe in, don't relax your belly. Keep squeezing those abdominal muscles. Your abdominal muscles support your back. And when you're twisting, your back um, and your spine needs that support. Ankles stay flexed so the legs are strong because legs also give your back support. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to do it nice and slow here. We're going to move with the breath. On an exhale, we're going to twist left hand towards your right, finger, your right toes. If you can touch, go for it. Right arm stretches back behind you. On an inhale, you come to center. Arms can stay lifted. lifted. As you exhale, you twist right fingers towards left toes or shin. Left arm goes back. And then coming to center on an inhale. Okay, and now you just keep going in your own time with your breath. So as you exhale, you twist. As you breathe in, back to center. Squeeze your tummy tight. So each time you breathe in, don't release those pelvic floor muscles. Don't release your abdominals. But do keep breathing. Okay, moving with the breath is important. And you might want to reach even further past the toes, but don't lift your bum off the floor. So as you reach to the right, the left bum will want to lift. As you reach to the left, the right bum will want to lift. Push back and down with the hips on the opposite side to which you are reaching. You might want to turn your head as you twist. And look back towards the hand behind you. And that gives you the full rotation through the spinal column. Keep going. Check those legs. Flex the ankles. And then you're going to take one more twist in your own time to each side. After you've done that, coming to center. And allowing the shoulders to roll back. Now we're going to bring left foot in. We're going to come to an Upavishta Jhana Shashasana, a wide leg Jhana Shashasana. Keep flexing the right ankle, tipping forwards onto your hands. Or sliding the arms further forwards or taking it to forearms. And once more, keeping the bum flat down on the ground. Don't lift off your butt. And then remember that your neck and your head are an extension of the spine. So we always want a long, straight spine. If you're dropping your chin into your throat, you're rounding in your neck. 
which means you're rounding your spine. So keep extending the top of your head in that straight line away from your tailbone, away from your lower back to get the full extension in the spinal column. Each time you breathe out, sinking into backs of thighs, sinking into sits bones. And then keeping that spine long and tall, walk your hands up. Well, open the left leg out. Flex the ankle, don't flop your foot. Bringing the other foot in when you're ready. And then tipping down onto hands, forearms, or stretching all the way out in front of you. And feeling the breath. Sinking down deep into the floor with each exhale. So doing seated work is always very grounding for the nervous system. It's a fabulous way to start your day, guys. So when we sleep, we tend to our energies and our mind and awareness. It rises up to the upper part of the body, into the head, even sometimes flying out to wherever it goes when we're sleeping and that is when we are considered to be ungrounded so we want to get our awareness back down into the body and well connected to the earth and then we tend not to be too scattered or distracted in our day and walking the hands all the way up and we'll open up that right leg bringing your legs in together and making your way onto hands and knees. Okay, let's do our cats and cows, rolling the spine with your breath. Soften into your face, soften into your eyes and your mouth as you roll. And then we're going to come into a flat spine halfway between those two rolls. Keep your hands when you place them on the floor here. And then this next thing we're going to do, they're going to stay under the line of the shoulders. Push down into your left palm and all your fingers and lift your right arm up. Look down to the back of your left hand. Don't look up towards the lifted hand. If arm all the way up does not feel okay, Bring your hand onto your hip or palm flat down on your lower back or your sacrum. And now we think of this as a chest opening stretch. So we want to lift that right shoulder as high as you can. It's not about the arm. That's why hand on the hip gives you exactly the same opening here, except for maybe a little bit of a stretch in the arm muscles. If the palm is down, you don't get that. Feel the breath. And then on an exhale, bringing your right hand to the mat under your right shoulder. Adjust anything that needs adjusting. And then on an inhale, left arm goes up and we're looking down at that right hand. Maybe left hand to left hip um, or the lower back. And that might be different on each side, guys. A lot of us have shoulder issues on one side, not on the other. And you get to the opposite side and you realize you can't lift the arm. Don't force it. But do keep breathing. On an exhale, sweeping the left hand down to the mat. And from here, we're going to go up into our down dog. So tucking those toes, knees lift, stretch it out. Pedal the knees if you want to. Roll your head if you want to.
And now we're going to walk feet forwards to hands at the top of the mat. Feet are hip distance apart with a big toes slightly turned in. Hanging down, either just relaxing the arms or holding onto forearms or elbows. If you need to sway or roll anything out, go ahead and do that. And make sure that your arches of your feet are lifting here. Don't lean into the inner side of your foot. Just really dropping down into your rib cage with each out breath, getting heavier and heavier in your head, your shoulders, and your arms. And now, if you're holding onto arms or elbows, drop them down, relax the shoulders a bit more, and we're going to rise and fall with the breath. So on an inhale, circle your arms out to the side and up over your head. As you breathe out, bringing hands down to your chest. On an in-breath, we'll reach your arms up. As you breathe out, circle and fold. On the in-breath, half lift, hands to shins, chest parallel to the floor. On an out-breath, fold down again. As you breathe in, float the arms up over your head. On your exhale, hands come to chest. Keep going in your own time. So floating up on the in-breath. Exhale to fold. Half lift on your inhale. Folding down deeper again on the exhale. Just keep going. So these lifts and lowers, you guys know that there are a whole lot of variations that we do with the arms. But uh, the variations are to affect the shoulders and the chest and the upper back differently. But this lifting and lowering with the breath, again, really good for your nervous system. Really good for releasing tension in your whole back body, backs of calves, knees, thighs, lower back, middle back, upper back, even your neck. Keep floating. So if you tend to be a bit stiff and tight in your joints when you wake up in the morning, this is something that you can do for a minute and all of that will soften and release. It's usually the most simple things that we do in our yoga practice that are the most effective. We're we'll float up and down one more time. And next time you fold, we're staying in the forward bend. From here, taking your right leg back into a lunge. Get the knee straight and we twist. Right hand on the floor and the shoulder. Either left hand to your hip or left arm all the way up. Hug your left thigh towards your tummy and your chest. Lengthen evenly through both sides of your neck. On an exhale, hand comes to the ground. Keep breathing as you step that right foot forwards. And then we take the other leg back when you're ready. Make sure your right calf and shin are directly over your heel. Either right hand to your right hip or stretching the arm up. And again, lengthen evenly through both sides of the neck. Using that extension through the neck and the head to help lengthen your spine. Feel your breath. Notice each breath as it flows in and out. On an exhale, we bring right hand to the ground. 
And stepping back to your downwards facing dog. Get to hold that down dog now. With each out breath, feel your body weight and your awareness sink into your palms. Sink into all ten fingers. Sinking into feet and toes and heels. And then we're dropping down onto our shins. We're going to come to sitting. Swing your legs out in front of you. For a Janna Shashasana. Okay, starting with feet touching. And then bringing right foot to inside of your left thigh. Inhale and reach forwards. Squaring off your chest and your shoulders. Make sure both arms are doing the same thing here. Don't have one hand back and one arm out to the side. Get the arms doing the same thing so that the shoulders are doing the same thing on each side. And now as you breathe, again, I want you to feel your breath in your back. Feeling the breath in the spine. So our ribs expand and contract in three directions. We tend not to pay attention to our back body. We're quite aware of the breath in the front ribs and the chest. And notice how those ribs are expanding and contracting in your back as you breathe in and out. With your inhale, we're going to lift all the way up and stretch that right leg out, left foot to inside of the right thigh. Square into your upper body and when you're ready, inhale to reach forwards. Keep that breath flowing. If you are able to, you want to make your out breaths longer than your in breath. Out breaths longer than in breaths is a relaxation breath working directly on your nervous system. Relaxed is always a good place to start your day. With an inhale, come all the way up, stretch your left leg out in front of you, and from here, we're going to make our way down onto backs. Keep your legs together. And we're going to do a one minute twist on each side. So I'm going to give you an option here. You've got Option one is to bend the right knee up and twist the leg over your left leg. Option two is to bend the knees and come to eagle legs with right thigh over the left and then drop knees over to the left. So choose one of those, whichever you're feeling you want to do this morning. Flatten the shoulders down into the floor behind you. If it's comfortable, you can bend that right elbow and then swivel and turn your palm up to the roof with the back of the hand on the floor. If that doesn't work, just sliding that arm out to wherever you need it. Turning the right palm up will help the shoulder go down. Soften your throat. Relax the sides and the back of your neck. And 
and gently rolling yourself up to center. And either both knees bent and crossing left thigh over the right or right leg straight on the ground with the left knee bent, twisting it off to the other side. Now once again, flatten the shoulders so the chest is open, you breathe easily. Fully soften and relax into your belly. Feel your head get really heavy on the ground. And gently untwisting yourself. Now, if you have the time, you're welcome to stay in a few minutes of Shavasana. Otherwise, we're going to hug the shins, squeeze the knees in, lengthen out that lower back. If you don't have time to do a few minutes of Shavasana, Gently rocking yourself up to sitting. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely day, guys. Namaste.